Is this water sanitary? Tastes like global saturation to me. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, and oh boy. For those of you who always wanted to see the first game, and essentially the second game, put into cinematic form properly, as a stretch to say, as opposed to the Paul W.S. Anderson films that we were oh so eloquently treated to for the last decade in a bit. It's definitely up your alley. This film follows a myriad of characters that we all know and love from the series, uh, even if they are a slightly bit different and in some cases very different from the original source material. Claire, Chris, Wesker, Jill, and Leon, who is essentially the complete opposite of what his actual character is known for, as they come to realize that things in Raccoon City are not exactly normal. Now, in terms of how the film adapts the original source material, it does take a little bit of creative liberties. In some of the cases, it actually makes sense in the terms of making Raccoon City kind of a dead town that relied off of Umbrella, but Umbrella is moving away because they're kind of realizing that shit that they've been doing to this town is going to kind of have a comeuppance. It's associated with poisoning in the water, and I actually kind of like that aspect a little bit more than just the idea of a zombie infection just kind of coming about it. It works with how the film progresses. I like how they include the Spencer Mansion, even if it is a little bit random about how they get there, which before any real big criticism comes about for this film, I have to give credit to Johan Roberts, the director and writer of this film. This is clearly a dude who loved the games. He makes as many references as he can, even if some of them don't make any sense to why they are in the movie. He is a committed dude to trying to capture and bring all of the elements that he can from the Resident Evil games into this movie. And while there are some changes here and there to those aspects that, again, are kind of random, I still will commend him for that. The architecture of this film is almost pretty much dead on. The police station, the Spencer Mansion, albeit like miniature versions, are very reminiscent, very accurate to what they looked like in the games. The design of the dogs, the zombies, even the liquors are pretty accurate as well. There are a few things that are a little bit different, but the one big issue that this film definitely had in its production is that Sony gave this movie practically no money. It is on the wall how little money there is in this film, especially with how it ends. That does have some effects in terms of how the CGI looks. The CGI doesn't look great in some cases. In some parts it does. Definitely a lot of outsourcing, probably. I think in terms of how this film was put together, I feel like they went with the first draft of the script rather than actually kind of going through it and kind of weeding out what could and couldn't be in there. Definitely in terms of the dialogue scenes, I feel like it was the first pass because some of the acting in this movie is is quite bad but it's not really the actor's fault it's the dialogue the dialogue is cringe in some places in other parts it's just the actors being like this is my motivation are you fucking serious particularly Wesker Wesker's involvement in this film is laughable he is such a neutered down version of what he is and then speaking of another character who's definitely watered down Leon Kennedy is a joke in this film to see him like this drunk has been failure in this movie who is so goddamn incompetent that it's laughable so it does definitely take a little bit of away from that character and speaking of incompetency everyone in this movie is an idiot every single fucking person the director is well known for making really bad b-horror movies and if you're a fan of those kind of movies you're definitely gonna get, I would almost say, a high budget version of a B-horror movie. There are a lot of instances in this film that the stuff just gets dumb. And unfortunately, a lot of those moments usually follow a very good scene. There are a lot of good scares in this movie. It's definitely scarier than any of the other Resident Evil movies that Paul W.S. Anderson made, especially involving Chris Redfield, where he's having the shootout in the mansion and it's all in the dark and there's just these flashes of gunfire and whatnot. And then at one point he's got no gun, so he's got a lighter and the lighter keeps going out. And at first, the first few times it's like, okay, this is actually really spooky, but then he keeps trying to put the lighter on when imminent danger is right fucking next to him. Why are you focused on the lighter right now, bro? Get the fuck out of there. There are very cool, scary, spooky, and kind of fun moments in this movie, but they are almost always 
immediately preceded by dumb bullshit. I hate to say it, but Rotten Tomatoes actually has a pretty goddamn dead on description slash rating for this movie, being a very accurate, very respectful interpretation of the original source material and why it kind of really doesn't translate well over to the silver screen. I did like a lot of the references, even if some don't make sense. For instance, the Ashford twins are shown in this film. It's not a spoiler because it doesn't have anything to fucking do with anything else in the film and unless you had played the games or knew about the source material you wouldn't have any fucking clue who these two are if they do make a sequel from this maybe but there is so badly placed bait for a sequel and that's even if this film gets a sequel so in the end while this movie is a absolute wreck for a large portion of it it is also a respectful love letter to the Resident Evil series. So in the end, I'm gonna give Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City a two out of seven. But don't let the two fool you, because honestly, I think you should see it. I think it's funny. I think it's a fun time. You're gonna laugh, you're gonna scream, you're gonna just go, what the fuck is going on? It's kind of one of those movies you watch with a bunch of buds and have a few beers and have a good laugh. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.